This summer, the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum has been devoting an exhibition about how the world can be reshaped by planners. In this case, that can mean anything from visionary social reformers to the designer of Boston's emerald necklace. It can also mean the textile workshops in which young people are using historic and aesthetic material to reimagine their own neighborhoods. Working with them is our guest from the museum, a salon luminary and eco-sustainable fashion designer, Natalia Jameg. Thank you very much for being with us, Natalia. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I want to ask you to explain your field, uh, sustainable fashion. What yes. is that exactly? So uh, it's actually an, a new, more emerging uh, like facet of the fashion industry. It's still related to the fashion industry, but basically sustainable fashion designers and people that are in sustainable fashion are trying to push for reform within the fashion industry towards creating things in a more sustainable way, in an ethical way, without taking advantage of the earth, its resources, and its people. That's in short. Um, so it's... Even though it's new in the sense that, like, it was the it was started like in the 70s, but now, now you know, fast forward to 2019, there is a lot more uh, people involved in the movement and a lot more designers trying to be sustainable, fashion brands trying to be sustainable. It's something that it's even trickling out into the. Um, the contemporary fashion industry, um, and uh, there's a lot of brands that are actually the problem that are act now thinking about how to do things sustainably. So it's a really exciting time in sustainable fashion. Now, now you studied design in, in college, I imagine, but, but what made you interested in the sustainability part of this? Um, so when, when I decided to declare my major as fashion design, I uh, realized that the fashion industry was actually really harmful for the environment. So like when I decided to switch over to fashion design, I did a lot of research and that's when I found this out. And I uh, decided to continue to pursue fashion design because I felt like I could be part of the solution to the problem, even though at the time I had no idea how, what the solution was, but I felt like I could learn how to be a fashion designer designer and then do things the right way. So that's what I'm trying to do now. Like I'm trying to be the most sustainable I can with the resources that I have. Um, so yeah. Well, you're working with young people from these programs in Boston and I'm sure a lot of them are interested in fashion in some way, but to engage with them around sustainable fashion. How do you do that exactly? Yeah, so I'm teaching them sustainable fashion techniques. So for example, how to dye fabrics naturally, the difference between like raw materials and like the difference between organic cotton and conventional cotton. Um, I'm teaching them how to upcycle. So upcycling is actually like a big part of what I do and it's a big part of sustainable fashion because anybody can do it. Anyone can upcycle, uh, you know, a blazer or a t-shirt and turn it into something new or upcycle a pair of jeans into a jacket. So I've, I've taught them how to upcycle. Um, and um, we just, I teach them, I'm, I'm trying to teach them about fashion, but in a sustainable way. So even though they're learning how to pattern make and they're, lear they're cutting fabric, um, teaching them that like you shouldn't be wasteful, you should be mindful of how much fabric you're using, how much water you're using when you're dying and everything. Now, when you talk about uh, upcycling, you know, I, I imagine going into a thrift shop, and I have done that sometimes, uh, coming up with something that isn't very interesting. I can't make it any better, but, but what about the young people you work with? What are they doing with these items exactly? Yeah, so they've done really cool things with the up, things that they upcycle. I had one student who turned uh, two pairs of jeans into like an off-shoulder top, so that was really exciting. And then I have a couple students for that for their final project, they're upcycling. Um, so one of them, she's turning old denim that doesn't fit her anymore into a dress. And then I have another student that's turning old den denim that doesn't fit her anymore into a denim jacket. And, um, and then I have other students who are painting on stuff and they're like embroidering. So I feel like it's re like if you are like a creative person and you like to let your ima imagination run wild, upcycling is a way to do it. And you don't even need to know how to sew to upcycle. Like you can literally just like use a needle and a piece of thread and upcycle a piece of clothing. Because upcycling is anything from turning jeans into shorts 
to turning like a trench coat into a gown. So it could be really small or really big. Now, one thing is very normal, especially for teenagers, uh, you know, their idea of clothing is sometimes they want something that they see in a store mm -hmm. or in a magazine. And you're working with teens who instead, they're sort of creating something totally on their own. What's the difference the person who does that? Yeah, so, well, I mean, after they are done with this workshop and they, you know, learn all the skills that I'm teaching them, they will be able to uh, maybe look at something at a store and maybe recreate it in their own way with with resources that they already have. So they will be not contributing to consumerism because they'll be uh, making their own things. So it's also how you choose to present yourself in the world, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I feel fashion is so important. Like oftentimes people think like, oh, it's an, I don't care about fashion but it's like everyone wears clothes even if you don't follow trends you don't follow fashion you're still you're still wearing clothing so that's part of it this is being the news we're talking with natalia j meg from the isabella stewart gardner museum um, uh, natalia what's also going on here is, is i guess this project has something to do with the communities where these young people live uh, could you give me some examples of, of what's going on how this is filtering out in a way yeah, absolutely. So um, what we are using as our inspiration for our final projects is uh, historical maps of the city, uh, the ones that are in, in the ex exhibition at the Garner Museum. And it's all going to culminate August 22nd at the block party. I'm going to showcase um, textiles that I created, co-created with the students from the workshops, as well as textiles I'm creating on my own, as well as a textile I'm co-creating with, uh, with a printmaker. Her name is Heather McMorty. And and um, we're creating a print inspired by um, basically maps of Boston in 2070, 2080, when um, the the sea level is going to be have frozen so there's going to there's we used a lot of maps that we actually got from the city because the city's been planning around um how to prepare for the climate change and how to prepare for the flooding that's going to come along with sea level rise so we took all of those maps including the maps from historical boston from the historical boston exhibit to and the maps from uh, the future that we got from the city to create a print that basically layers everything and it's going to be um, really pl pleasing to the eye to look at but also it's like um, very informative and people will be able to see up if they get up close to see like what what areas of the city are going to be affected by flooding which is going to be a, like a lot of the city even inland. Now we're talking about mapping the future is this sort of a, a doom scenario or are the young people sort of no this is what I want to see? Well I mean the, when I took on this project, I was like, well, every time I, th I start to think about the future of Boston and just the future in general, it's like climate crisis is the one thing that comes up, keeps coming up. And it's, it's something unavoidable, unavoidable to like address, especially in a coastal city. Like we are, and, and Boston was built basically by throwing dirt into the ground and on, into the ocean to rise up so we could like build, for example, the, um, the airport. So um, I, I didn't want it to make it a doomsday scenario, but it's just kind of to raise awareness around climate change and global warming and to use this as an opportunities to to like educate people in the community so they know what's coming but also like also give people tools on how they could um get informed and what they can do to hopefully mitigate it now i i come from a family where uh, at least for my wife handling a sewing machine is not a big deal but for a lot of people who were born in this country <laughs> It's t they're, they're clueless about it. I mean, how do, you, how do you work with young people just to do the yeah. fundamentals? Yes. Yeah. So um, for the High Square Task Force and Sisters on Chain workshops, I just taught them how to dye fabric and how to print because that's easier than actually sewing. Now, at Urbano, um, they're artists in residence, so I'm teaching them workshops twice a week, and it started at the beginning of the summer. And so I started by teaching them how to sew a straight line, how to sew a curved line, and then we upcycled some things and then we sewed um, we made the covers for the sewing machines that we're using so I've been trying to like build their 
their knowledge in sewing and I just tell them so, some of them wanted to start sewing from the start but it's like you have to learn how to crawl before you can run so I'm teaching them the fundamentals and then they're going to apply it to their final project which they're going to showcase at the block party on the 22nd. What do you think excites the young people about this? I mean you talk about dyeing I mean do colors excite? I mean, they excite me. I, even the fabric shop. I mean, don't, don't they do that to these kids? Yeah, yeah. They're really excited about the colors. They um, they love the uh, the dyes we're using. So we're using turmeric, which is uh, root. I and thought that was seasoning, right? Yeah, it is. But you can use it to dye. The only thing is not light fast. But then we're also using a light fast fast dye, which is cochineal. And cochineal is actually an ancient dye. We've been using it for centuries um, and it's still being used today. And it's, it's, it's organic, it's natural, and it's, um, it's biodegradable. And like, it's okay for you to put it in water. Like it's not going to contaminate the, the water supply. So it's a really great dye to use and it's light fast, so it'll last forever. So those are the dyes we've been using. And um, yeah, so like the only thing about cochineal is that it's not vegan, but I guess I'm willing to compromise because you can get such a beautiful color. Finally, what did you get from this, uh, working with these young people? Um, a lot. I feel like, I mean, I love young people and working with them and learning from them. And um, I feel like uh, uh, young people are underestimated, but they have so much to offer, so many great ideas, and they're so creative. So it's been really great to be around them and around youthful energy. And um, I learned that basically I want to continue to be an educator and work with young people. Right. Well, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Natalia Jameg from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum.